Broadcasting live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show. Today we're saddling up and headed to Sun Cattle Company in OKC. And later in the show, Legendary Tower versus Oklahoma versus Gojira. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley. The tower looks like it's going to be attacked by King Kong. I can see King Kong hanging off the top. Nobody knows what you're talking about. They will. They will when they hear the... Whatever. I can't do Godzilla's voice. But anyway, I had a splendid weekend judging barbecue. You did. I did judge. And I'll be honest, by the time I was done, I was like, I can't eat anymore. In fact, I gave you all my... I gave you all the scraps. The bonus ribs. The bonus ribs. Yeah. Not bad. Oh, they were good. Even 10th place tastes pretty good, I bet. Um, I don't know. They weren't labeled in the box. They weren't labeled I in the box. I just ate them all. Well, the thing about judging the barbecue is we didn't know who it was. In fact, until the results were released a few days later, we didn't know, unless you memorized the number that you were judging, you had no, I, no, no clue who won. Hmm. Just knew that I, I know who won, but I don't know who I was... G- who you were voting for? Right. Interesting. Because after a bit, the chicken... You're, I'm looking around. You're not supposed to cheat off scorecards, but I was seeing people that had clearly, clearly done it before. I'm like, how are they eating it? Because there's a certain way. You can't... It's not just like pass the plate and you know everybody takes a, the biggest piece of chicken. There's a, there's a method to it. You want to get... The one that looks just because you're the the criteria is this appearance, tenderness, and flavor. Those are the three criteria. So if they bring the styrofoam, because they were all brought out in styrofoam containers, the captain of the table would open it up and go ahead. Before we get too deep into this, did you actually mention where you were judging barbecue? I did not. (laughs) So So somebody just tuning into the show is like, no idea. This guy is just sitting. Just like going to about, restaurants, judging barbecue. But he's judgmental. You, you should have heard him. Anyway, so Brett I, was judging barbecue at the Highway 62 barbecue competition in Nakoma Park this last weekend. If the regulars that listen to the show already know. But they do. If you're in Mongolia, who's number one in, in barbecue as well. I think, I think that may be why we're so big in Mongolia. Probably. Mongolian never, barbecue. Yeah. Oklahoma it's barbecue. It's a thing. It could be a, a translation thing. Now, Korean barbecue, if they're listening, they already know the drill. They already know the criteria. So anyway, table captain comes around, opens the styrofoam container, and you're supposed to not judge it on, is there? because a lot of them put parsley, a lot of them put kale as a, a bed for it to lay on. You're supposed to judge it as it is. If there's, for instance, on the brisket, they may put beef tips, uh, not beef tips, burn ends in there. You don't. You're not judging the burn ends. Those are basically we want to win. So here's a an added, bonus burn here's in. A, here's a burn, bonus burn in. And sometimes it swayed you. Sometimes the burn in was better than the main course. Yeah. So they'd come around with we judged Friday night was was the rib burn as they call it. So we judged ribs Friday night. The next day it was chicken, brisket, and ribs. There were some good looking. I mean, the problem is is for me I'm used to eating a certain kind of barbecue. So I'm looking for that, for uh-huh. that certain kind of barbecue. There's some, there's some techniques that they do and some different glazes that they put on that's unlike anything I've ever had. And some of the most perfectly, the ribs look like they were printed on a 3D printer. But by the time I was all said and done, I was ready to not eat any barbecue. Oh, I, I hear you. It was a great event. Yeah. I loved the music. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We still have to find the name of that band that yeah, was playing. They were great. There, there are some young kids. A family a, band. Family band. Mind-bogglingly oh, good. Yeah. But, dude, I'm telling you, walking around the smells. Oh, the the mixture coming of smells. from the cook teams. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Like you can't be hungry and go through that. But here's the thing. I said I was done with barbecue. So stuck around. Did the people's choice. 20 bucks, he give you a little plate, you go through, and basically it's a maze bush of barbecue. Just little servings here and there. There was two types of people that did it, and you can guess which one I was. The type that went, I'll take a little bit of that, little bit of that, go eat it. 
go to the next line, get a little bit of that, a little bit of that, go eat it, and work your way around. Mm-hmm. Which type do you think I was? You were the guy who put your mouth at the end of the table and had them scrape the scraps into your face? Close. The guy that went to every table, the tables that that had something a little bit different each time. Because, I mean, it's like, okay, brisket, brisket, brisket. I had some peach cobbler that was out of this world. Fantastic. Uh, Who else? I mean, so once I loaded the regular little plate, I took that plate out. (laughs) And, you know, they all came in a uh, a Frisbee. Mm-hmm. So I walked around with the Frisbee, looking like a guy that stole a Frisbee just to eat. I was like, just so you know, my other plate's full. They're like, oh, it's all big now. So I'd get the freaking the uh, Frisbee loaded up. I didn't eat it all. Don't get me wrong. I didn't okay. eat it all. But, uh, yeah, a lot of great food out there. Uh, the first, one of the neatest things was the first night you had to do a sip and bite where each team would put together a, a cocktail or a drink and some type of a, an appetizer. Some tables, I'll be honest, made out like bandits. My table, uh, it, it was a sad. It, we had a sad sip and bite. But overall experience was a great experience. There are some people that literally are prof- not professional, but you can be a a registered barbecue judge. Barbecue judge. Yeah. And they had methods in which you could contact I think it's like the one said the OK OKBS or something like that. I don't know. It's probably not. And to find out what classes to take, and which I thought was pretty cool. So, I mean, so it was a real deal. It wasn't just a bunch of guys, you know, fat guys sitting around eating food and telling each other how much they like it. it I don't take think it. there's anything wrong with that. No, I don't you either. Made, you made that sound like that was a bad thing. Plus size men. Is that better? No, you just made it sound like a bunch of fat guys sitting around eating food. Well, I mean, like, that sounds like a a, a weekend well, there event were women, for me. There were women too. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not going there. You're trying to set me up for a, for failure. You're not doing it. But it was a lot of fun. Hope to be invited back next year. Uh, I didn't stick around for everything. I I got cold. I was cold and tired, so I didn't stick around for everything. But I had fun. It was a lot of fun. Well, we also had a little bit of an activity last week. Oh yeah. And that is where today's episode begins. Yes. You and I were in downtown Oklahoma City. Uh Uh-huh. And we were on the prowl for lunch. And I think we found a diamond in the rough. I really do. I mean, it's it's a rare occasion that we eat somewhere that we both agree that it's great and that we both agree to come back to it. It happens. But I don't know how often. It's very... it's, It's... that's a once in a blue moon type of event because we typically use find something. We each of us find something good and bad about a place, and our tastes are slightly they're, different. They're you don't different. like you don't like Italian food as yeah. much as I like right. Italian food, mm-hmm. and I don't like Brahms as much as you like it, Brahms. Right, uh, and I've been crucified for from eating Brahms recently because I work two jobs and it's easy just to swing through and have a burrito and make a video about it. You know who you are. Shut up. But anyway. we are not talking about Brahms. We're not. Today we are talking about the Sun Cattle Company on Film Row in mm-hmm. Oklahoma City. What a cozy... You know, it's funny, the location. When you think downtown, they've done so much down there, dude. Like, it doesn't even look like the same place. I haven't been on Film Row. I don't think I've... If I have, I've just passed by it. But right there on Sheridan... There's a lot going on right there. There is a lot going on, and it doesn't look anything like no. it looked when we were young, much younger. When we were, when that was our stomping ground. Hell, five years ago, it doesn't look the same. True, but Sun Cattle Company is really unique. First and foremost, I'm pretty sure you can get a hamburger for five bucks. Unheard, you can't unheard. find fast food for five do- with five dollar hamburgers. No, so. A check in the wind column on pricing alone. Dude, it's it knocked I couldn't believe it. It's locally sourced beef, mm-hmm. which is mind boggling to me that you can get yeah. a five dollar burger and it be locally sourced. But something I didn't realize while we were there, Mike Rowe stopped in at the Sun Cattle Company and he said they served him one of the best burgers he's ever had. You know, and that's pretty high praise from Mike Rowe. Now Mike Rowe I almost feel like he bought a timeshare here in Oklahoma. He spent he has spent a lot of time in OKC, Tulsa, uh, you know, up northeast, covering the oil and gas industry. And you know, everybody knows who Micro is from uh, from Dirty Jobs. 
I'm not going to say I disagree. That ham, it's one of the best hamburgers I've ever had too. And when you're talking farm to table, which again, that's been a theme. It's been a theme with the only an OK show for a yeah. while. Farm to table is huge from our perspective. Yeah, but dude, so when we went in, I got the Big Jack, which is a double meat cheese, little lettuce pickles, and what they call sun sauce, which is. Kind of a thousand island, but we couldn't determine what the it had a little bit of a kick to it. There, there's something else in it, but dude, one of the juiciest burgers mm-hmm. I've had in a long time. And you know that's the thing. And maybe we're doing it wrong, but for a griddle burger, it's easy to kind of overcook those and kind of cook out some. You know what I mean? To cook it all out. To yeah. cook it all out. I know a lot of places that do that. And again, quality of food. I think it's going to be a theme in this show. Quality of food versus price. Now, I get convenience charge. Sure, McDonald's wins the convenience war every single time. But for a few dollars more? I don't know if they do anymore, you don't? to be completely honest. Yeah. Recently, I was on the road and took a pill. And needed something to take. And needed yeah. something in my stomach. And the only thing within miles on the highway yeah. was a McDonald's. So I was like... All right, I'll just go and get a uh, McDouble and rip the bun off of it. Yeah. And I'll be good. You know, just something in my stomach before I throw up in in my truck. Pull up to the drive-thru. Am I ordering with the app today? Well, no. That's why I'm in the drive-thru. Yeah. And then pull up to the window. They've got 150 different forms of payment or ordering options plastered all over the window. All I ordered was a McDouble and a tea. They gave me my tea right away. I sat in the line. I, I sat at the window for a solid 10 minutes. What is the point of an app if I can't get my food before one, two, three, four people ahead of me does? What's yeah, the point in that? I don't understand. I don't understand the app. I don't understand them pushing all of the Apple Pay and the just like. Yeah. Give me just the POS system. Right. You Look. give me a McDouble. And I, I give, give you, you a $5 my, bill, and you, and you give me change back. No, it doesn't work like that anymore. I, and again, what's the... It will, and we'll get back to Sun Cattle, but this is a great opportunity to rail on McDonald's. An app is... Why, if, I, if I'm ordering through the app, why can I just... I don't need an app. I can order it right here. It, yeah. just, it doesn't add any... The only thing it does is, you know, like every other app does now that is food-related... Oh, but you get points. That's a selling point. You get points. You get points. You get free food. That's the thing with Chick-fil-A is everybody's on Chick-fil-A's because you get free food. Like, Well, all of them do that. But at the end of the day, they've all raised their prices oh, yeah. to incorporate all that. So it doesn't even matter. Yeah, you think you're, you're not saving deal. any money. No. I'm sorry, but I went and bought a McDouble and a tea and it cost me $7 plus tax. Yeah. Mm-mm. That is not okay. No. Not when I can go to some place like Sun Cattle Company and get beef that came from Oklahoma that has never been frozen. Never been frozen. Prepared well, fast. Dude, between the between the time that we walked in the door yeah. and we left, it was probably fifteen minutes. Oh, easy. Yeah, and there and people were steadily filing in. And even when I had to get my to go order towards the end, and I you know, I we'll talk about add ons that I had, but still time wise and again, price wise, quality quality and quantity can go they can go hand in hand. One of the nice things, if you are in the area after hours, into the day, they're in the right area for the for the people that like to take part in the nightlife. They have beer on draft, bottles and cans, they have mixed drinks. Which is not something I expect from a burger joint. No, absolutely not. Um, so I, I didn't partake, obviously. But man, the menu, I'm, I'm, I was really shocked. The thing I noticed right away when I walked in is it had that, it, I'm, this is going to be a bad example, but it reminded me of a combination of Crockett's and Cattleman's mixed with an old burger joint feel. I like the bar stool setup with the bar stools that are mounted into the floor. It has that that bar kind of like the bar seating at, at Cattleman's does. Even with the 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 lighted photographs, mm-hmm. they have those. At, I think they have those at Cattleman's as well. But I think 
there's a more of a personal touch to those. You can kind of tell. I would definitely say it's more of an upscale burger joint, but it, it's still a burger joint. Right. And they had like a, a, a bull or a steer mount. Mm-hmm. So it did. It kind of had that ru- I'm probably messing it completely up, but it just has kind of like that. It feels like Sun Cattle Company. It's, it, In fact, it's not like anywhere else. It feels like Sun Cattle Company. You're walking smack dab into this this a rustler's freaking hideout in the middle of downtown on film row on yeah. freaking Sheridan in downtown Oklahoma city. I, it's cool. I love the place. There's a Sonic like four blocks away. Yes. I don't understand how that Sonic is in business. I'm being a hundred percent serious. It makes no sense to me at all. Why that Sonic exists. No. And that's the thing too, about this place. Did you look around? There are lawyers. There are, there are hipsters. There are old guy, retired, semi-retired. Every, every, nearly every walk of life is walking in the door. Mm-hmm. And it's not a huge place. Is no, it? it's not. Uh, I would say there's probably seating for maybe twenty five. Twenty five, maybe, maybe a little bit more, but not much. Yeah, I think you'd really have to pack it in to get more than that. As far as the menu goes, though, their focus is going to be on the fried onion burger, yeah. first and foremost. Mm-hmm. But they have a lot of neat additions, things you don't find at most fried onion burger places. Right. They do have the the hot dogs, but some of the things on the burgers. So the Big Jack, I took, I got mine without it, but uh-huh. the Big Jack actually comes with a hash brown on it. Oh man, you feel like you missed out? No, I mean you know obviously I'm yes, I'm trying you... not to eat the 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 potatoes. Yeah, gotcha. But their sun sauce is above and beyond. But they have things like pimento cheese. Yes, I had that on my burger. What'd you think? Dude, it added an entire an entire flavor. It's not like overwhelming, but you could it just added another another profile to the burger. But let's talk about what you would think you would pay. What do you think you would pay for your burger as is anywhere else? So I got my burger, a side salad and a tea. And I was out the door for 15 bucks. That's ridiculous. Like in a good way. Yeah, I would say. Like I'm not say, mad about it. I think getting a double burger, a side salad, and a tea at most places is going to be over 20 bucks. Oh, easy. Easily. And I, I think I got the deluxe um, add bacon with uh, pimento cheese. I mean, goodness gracious, dude. And I, okay. Because I, it's my first time there. I wanted to be able to talk, speak on a little bit more than just the burger. Mm-hmm. I also got a Connie. Okay, I got a, I got a Connie. Sorry, I got a Connie. Got a Coney. And when you do a Coney, you got to do the, you got to do the chili, and you got to do the cheese, and you got to do the slaw, dude. And they use a Schwab's hot dog. I don't know how much more local you can get than farm fresh beef and a Schwab's dog. That signature pink dog. Best hot dog there. Sorry, Bar S. <laughs> but Schwab's is the, is the king of weenies. Yeah, I don't know how you ate it, but then you also got the steak nuggets. No, I ate it in three bites. You watched. I know. I don't know how you ate it. Oh, very carefully. You saw it. But you also got the steak nuggets. Oh, man. Which I tried one of those. Dude. I'm going to say it's it's hard to make chicken fried steak. Mm-hmm. It but is. But it, it's got to be imp- nearly impossible to make bite-sized chicken fried steak and that's what they did now if you're a sun cattle company you're listening to this you're going dude it's not hard we do it all the time here's the thing with chicken fried steak if you cook it too long the breading if you're out there texas roadhouse if you're out there who else does the chicken fried steak thing worth a damn there's things that you have to do to ensure that the breading stays on if i bite in if i cut into it and the breading comes off it's a wrap i'm done these steak bites were breaded perfectly mm-hmm Dude, you can take a steak finger and shove it where the the sun cattle doesn't shine, and give me steak nuggets all day. With now we sauce. did have a difference of opinion on the onion rings. You liked them? I liked them. Your complaint was that they were too thin. They were too thin and maybe a little too crispy. For and you taste. thought they were too crispy. I th- I would order them that way. The thing about it being a thin onion. And a little cr- on the crispier side. Yeah. You could bite off the onion. And it not loses the breading. 
and it not or pull out the whole onion yeah. and yeah. then you just eat breading okay. later. No, I'm, you're right. You're 100 percent right on that. I think so you eat, I agree. Most onion rings, you either have to put the whole thing in your mouth, right, or it gets dissected Absolutely. as you eat. No, you're right. And there's, I mean, it broke apart. And maybe that's what I was. I'm so used to it breaking apart. Um, Johnny's used to make a damn good onion ring, but they broke apart. Yeah, I I would probably have to take them for another spin around the block. They're just not breaded enough for me. Maybe that's what it is too. They're not breaded enough, and the onion slices are a little thin. But that's that. It's preference. It's just a preference thing. So some of the things that we didn't try that probably won't get tried by me anytime soon. Okay. Fried PB and J with vanilla ice cream. Ooh, they do that. milks, shakes, or malts. And they have something they call a frack, which I'm kind of thinking is like a mix. It comes with Heath or Butterfinger Oreos and Reese's. Yeah. Again, they're priced right. Mm -hmm. Like, these people aggressively want your business. It's ridiculous. Or they is. just realize that they, if they serve more people, they don't have to make it as big a profit margin. You know, you just you're scrolling through, going, "This can't be right." Like the prices are just not. What's the secret? You get my. I'm for six bucks. I'm gonna give you a try. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not. There's nothing hoity-toity about it. They give you. You eat off a paper plate, Harley. No, I think again. I think it it does a real good job of mixing kind of the r rustic. Uh, almost diner feel or, you know, hamburger stand feel with the, you know, we're in film row yeah, in a major metropolitan city, you know, kind of right in the mix of things. They do a really good job of balancing that. Absolutely. Without failing on any of it. Well, I think one thing that it might go against them, and it's not even anything significant because of where they are, it's they're e probably easily overlooked, and they're also probably judged like, oh, this has got to be one of those hipster hangouts. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of cool stuff. Not that they're not cool, but there's a lot of cool stuff down there. I agree, and I did see a couple of hipsters. Yeah, there's a but couple. I would yeah. say you're right. There was a good there was a there was a good mix of people. Yeah, good mix of people. Um, as far as hours go, they've got good hours. They good open hours. at eleven. Uh, A.M. every day, basically close at 10 every night, except they are closed on Sundays. They're right there on uh, Sheridan, 800 West Sheridan, downtown Oklahoma City. You can get a burger at 8 p.m., 8.30. Don't show up at 9.55. How do you feel about that? I don't care. If Okay, as a customer, if you know a place closes at 10. I'm not going to roll in there at 9.55, no, but if either. I worked there, I wouldn't care. Right, right. It's your job not to care. Right? Yeah. But you're if you're working there, you're secretly going, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start scrubbing the grill down. We don't close for another 20 minutes. I know, but we're going to just get a head start, and then somebody comes in, and they want to order 20 burgers. Which is why you don't get a head start. That's You true. wait till the closing time, you flip the sign, and then you Dude, get to work. Okay, so let me ask you this. What's your cutoff on, they close at 10, what's your, are you going to show up at even at 930? If, at a sit-down restaurant, I won't, I don't know why we're talking about this. But at a sit-down restaurant, I will not show up later than an hour before they close. Mm -hmm. And if it's a place where I can get a burger in 10 minutes, then I'll just make sure that I'm there no later than a half an hour before they close. I'll call it in. Or That's you'll use the app. Or use the app. I don't think Sun Cattle Company has an app, but they, they do have a website. They have Sun, an appetizer. I'm sure they do. Chicken, uh, not chicken nuts, steak nuggets. But they also have a website, which is my, which was my transition okay. that you totally stepped oh, on. Please. Their website is Sun Cattle Company or SunCattle dot com. Well, coming up after the break, guess what? We're getting our own Nakatomi Tower. I'm Raven Rollins, and this is my Southern True Crime podcast, where I discuss cases from my former hometown. Ada, Oklahoma paints itself as an average community, but its history of murder and corruption runs deeper than any story has ever told. You'll hear plenty of special guests, including authors and experts in their fields, who visit with me on each episode, as well as other cases in the southern states. With notorious and unknown cases alike, every victim sees the light on my show. This is Sirens, a true crime podcast. 
So our news story today from the Daily Oklahoman, Legends Tower. Could the tallest skyscraper in the U.S. withstand Oklahoma's tornadoes? So plans to build the country's tallest skyscraper in the heart of Oklahoma City has attracted national and international attention, but apparently not all of this publicity has been positive. You have expressed on previous shows that you are not a fan of the appearance of the the artist artist rendition, the Okitona of the Okitoma Tower. <laughs> but I I think there is some legitimate concerns about the safety of it actually being in Oklahoma City. I just think I don't know anything about structural integrity. I don't know anything about architecture. But when we think of Towers like the Sears Tower, and there's another one in Chicago that's bigger than the Sears Tower, where, and even like Japan, where they, where they're literally just clustered with these massive monoliths of, of architecture. Even those big boys sway. You know what I mean? No, it, and, and, and they actually, the, the, the architect actually talks about, they, they've built in sway in the, in the, the actual buildings. Which makes sense. I get it. I get the physics of it. But local residents question whether building the tallest tower in the United States might make it prone to either natural disasters Mm -hmm. or a target for terrorists. Mm -hmm. I think they're both legitimate concerns. Right. And I will not be attending a Christmas party at Legends Town. Definitely not going to go if it's on the 33rd floor. Not on the 33rd floor. No way. Um, especially if the 32nd floor is still under construction or whatever, whatever it was at Nakatomi. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have a Christmas party? The floor above, I'm having the, we're going to have, this year we're having the Christmas party in the basement. Why? Because there's construction on this 32nd floor. Why would you have a Christmas party, a floor above the construction? I, it makes no sense. I agree with you. They do have some neat... The 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 architect does have some neat little Easter eggs in the tower design. One of the things that I thought was interesting, the plans are for it to be one thousand nine hundred and seven oh, feet tall. Statehood. Yes. That's pretty that that's a cool one. I don't know if that's a selling point, but it's a pretty cool knot. It's a nice little knot. I think it's I think it's interesting. I think mm-hmm. if you can't layer a little bit of history or hide some Easter eggs in something that is basically two miles tall, then you, you, you're doing it wrong. That, and as much as I poo-poo the idea, can you think of a bigger beacon to say, check out OKC, check out our riverfront, because that's where they're, isn't that kind of where they're hedging their bets that they're going to try to put the thing is somewhere near the riverfront? Which oh, I, yeah. I'm trying to, in my mind, there's a, a lot more riverfront property than we're probably aware of, but it just... I'm trying to imagine this. I said monolith earlier, but that's exactly what it is. Trying to imagine where this thing's going to be. And I think it'll be cool. I just, I would be paranoid as much as anybody else with, with, again, it's just about the structural integrity. Back to what the architect said. Modern skyscrapers are built to withstand high winds and earthquakes. Uh Uh-huh. That they use technology that allows them to sway several feet in each direction without compromising the steel structure. Yeah. With that being said, there was an F3 tornado that hit Bank One Tower in Fort Worth in 2000. 80% of the 35-story tower's windows were destroyed. Yeah. I I just have a pair. I've accidentally gone onto an elevator thinking it was going to take me to the the, the 13th floor, not realizing that somebody hit the button already, and I ended up at the 65th floor. Mm Mm-hmm. Dude. I was like, I can't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't live in a place like that. I don't, I don't, I couldn't work in a place like that every day. There's not a chance. Dude, not I, a chance. I, yeah, I, I couldn't do, I'm a, I'm afraid of heights. Oh, me too. 190 stories. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. I, I'm tough. If they put a rooftop yeah. rest, we're never going to bo- never do going an to actual it. review. No, we and we're not even going to talk about it because I'd be, <laughs> I'd be by proxy scared shitless to even talk about. Hell, we have never done a show on the Eagle's Nest. Remember that old place up at the top of Regency Tower? Yeah, we've never done a show on that because I don't like heights and I don't like to go around in circles. I just, <laughs> I feel like you could hide a whole lot of stuff 
on the 105th to 109th or 190th story. Yeah. Like, you you could put anything you wanted up there, and I'd never know. You'd never know. and I'd never know. And I feel like if you work at the 100 whatever floor it is, you drew the short straw. I grew up working sure, in the basement. I'm sure there are tons of people that would that'll oh totally God. love that. But this project is supposed to be uh, have a three acre footprint. It's going to have more than two million square feet of residential retail and entertainment. That's pretty cool. I mean, I get again the renderings. It's straight out of Hollywood. I mean, it just looks. It's weird though. It's going to have two Hyatt hotels. Oh, two I, hotels. I have a connection to Hyatt. Maybe I could stay there for a reasonably for a reasonable price. Two of them, though. That, does that make sense to you that you're going to have two hotels in the same building? I'm going to dig into. I, I don't have much. I don't have a lot of evidence here, and I don't know if we can go into it. But the fact that they're having two Hyatt hotels, they're not going to be far from Okana. No, and they're not going to be far from the new the new um, arena, arena, the Thunder Arena. I think there's some some in cahoots going on. I just wonder we're beefing up. It's going to be in phases, which I'm all for. They're they're going to build the two smaller towers first, and I think those are like 34, 35 stories. Which isn't that about the height of Devon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have two of those, and then have the shooting up to the sky. But it's going to have like an entryway into yeah. the to the boardwalk area. It. It sounds neat, but I it just really feel like... It's too much? I don't know if it's too much, but man, I feel like you could see that from, from here. Yeah, it, it's like the the um, the Tower of Sauron or something like that. You know, it's like something out of... Out of a the, fantasy book or... Yeah. Like, yeah, I think you we talked about it earlier, you likened it to like the Emerald City. Yeah. Only it's one big... <laughs> it's one big emerald. <laughs> or... You could probably easily put the, the <laughs> put the um oh what is it called from uh I had it in my head from from Superman the um help me the uh fortress the fortress of solitude it looks like it's a part of the fortress of solitude from uh, Krypton I, I don't know I just know that that's it's huge and they're gonna have to work hard to make it fit the aesthetic oh yeah they're gonna have to work real hard and it's another thing too. And not to to talk about Okana a little bit, but some people are asking questions about Okana. Is it just going to be member exclusive? It's going to be open to the public, which bears the question, is this thing going to have similar, is it going to be geared more towards tourists? What are the advantages? It's, how user-friendly is it going to be for John Q, Jane Q public? Well, I mean, they're going to have the two hotels. They're yeah. going to have condos, apartments. They're also going to have stores and restaurants. So I think this is a... I, I I think it's a win, but I just I'm having a hard time I seeing it in my mind. Man, you gotta you gotta think that's gonna be like a five minute elevator ride, or it's gonna have one of those elevators. It's like like a like a bank tube shoot. And again, back to the uh, back to the the fear of heights. I don't know about you, but if I get into a four story oh, building, and it's a window just and, all the way up. No, and you hear the clank clank ping, ping, inside ping, ping, the ping. Uh-huh. the elevator shaft. That's it. I'm calling my family and telling my level. That's 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 it. It's a wrap. You're gonna find my body plastered to the floor of this elevator, dead. You're gonna have to peel me off of it. <laughs> he didn't fall. He just died. Because I guarantee this is one of those buildings where the elevator will run because. It's cool, and it's a great view. It's probably going to be a glass-bottom elevator. Oh, there's no way. A glass-bottom, hang on, a glass-bottom elevator with a beautiful view of the riverfront in the city. I bet you they don't do something all like that. All the way up. It, they'd, they'd have to wash it out with bleach for all the urine that built up in it from people. Dude, Dude where's I, your comfort, honestly, on an elevator, where's your comfort level at? What's your max floor comfort? As long as I'm not seeing it, it's no big deal. But if you're watching like the ground, like the car gets smaller. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If it it looks like... I have anxiety right now. If it looks like I might be catching a flight. Oh, my gosh. By sticking my thumb out the window, as opposed to like actually being in a building, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm probably not going to handle it. The last... If that's one of the situations where you're like, 
You know what? Right, I'm telling you right, my heart right now is pounding at the thought of just riding on the elevator as a, look at my face, it's red. I'm so scared. I'm so scared of this building. I really am. I want Godzilla to come <laughs> and, and save us from corporate America. That's what I want, but it's not going to happen. Well, if you want more information on the Legends Tower or if you want to make any corrections to their their article, say, include something like the kaiju or something like that in it, uh, we'll include a link a link to the story in the show notes. Absolutely. Well, the only OK show, we're some busy busy bees and beavers, by the way. Speaking of bees, don't mow your clover, because that's where clover honey comes from. Science, go learn it. But if you're out and about like we are, Come out and see us in June. We're going to be headed out to the Liberty Fest in Edmond. Come out, look for the guys in the tie dyes. Uh, we'd love to say say hi and kiss a baby. Or if you have any ideas for events that we should be aware of, or a baby, definitely let us know. Shoot us over an email, only an OK Show at gmail dot com. That's right. Get in it. Get on it. Be a part of the freaking greatest. Oklahoma travel and tourism podcast since, I don't know, the musical Oklahoma. This has been the only OK show. New episodes every week. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley. And we're out of here. Peace. Everybody out in the audience for the barbecue, baby. I am Joe Bob's. <laughs> I am the master's apprentice. That's so fun. Clean the lobby of the McDonald's, I do. Present. Present and accounted for, sir. Kids, only $15. This should have me do it. This should have me do the freaking extreme muscle. <laughs> if you like Grave Digger, you'll love Undertaker. Wait, no, you, it's taken. We can't say that. If you like the like the grave digger, you'll love the funeral director. Four by four, four wheel drive. <laughs> See your favorite monster trucks. Big truck. Uh, they're all big trucks. Yeah, but not big like this one. <laughs> oh my god! Big wheel. Oklahoma. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. Today, we're saddling up and headed to Sun Cattle Company in OKC. And later in the show, Legendary Tower versus Oklahoma. I'm Brett. Oh, fine. And welcome to the show. Today, we're saddling up and headed to Sun Cattle Company in Oklahoma City. Why don't you just do your voice? You want to you wanna be and welcome to Yosemite the show today. Sam. You do that later. Welcome to the show today. We're actually going to saddle up and go have a hamburger at this one place. Three, two, one. One. <sniffs>